I just bought the book Bushcraft by Morris Kahansky, and I decided that instead of just putting it on the shelf, I would read it and try to practice the skills inside. In order to motivate myself to do so, I'm starting a little outdoors book club on my channel. The purpose of these videos is to share information, uh, practice. I'm hoping to learn a lot in the process and hopefully you will too. One other thing, I'm not an expert. If I was an expert, I wouldn't need to buy a book. You'll get to see what an average guy from Iowa does trying to practice these skills. You don't have to be a Superman to go outside. Welcome to episode 10. Uh, we've moved past the firecraft section of the book and we're moving into axes. Uh, as time permits and conditions permit, I will revisit some of the um, other cooking methods that I didn't uh, cover, but uh, it just does not suit my schedule to be able to do all of those things right now, but I will get to them. So um, for axes, um, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to rehandle this old axe and basically start from fresh because this old axe um, has a lot of uh, things to demonstrate. Uh, that are actually uh, covered in the book. And so this was a, is a double bit axe. was made by craftsmen uh, probably in the 1970s and it was my grandpa's farm axe. And if you go to a lot of the farms and, and things like that in Iowa you'll find these old double bit axes. Um, people like this design for whatever reason. And the first thing to show you is that the handle has slid down in there and then the next thing to show you is that the end of it is chipped off and there's a split um, so this handle has outlived its usefulness and I'm going to replace it. In addition I'm going to redo the axe head. There's a significant chip out of here. The whole thing is dull and uh, I'm just going to give it some TLC the first thing I did was select a good hickory axe handle and I got this one at the hardware store. It's not perfect but it's the best one that they had. Um, some things to look for is uh, look at the grain and uh, you want to make sure that the grain is in line with the handle and you can really see it back here. Uh, in the Kahansky book he shows um, different grains to look for and this is considered ideal for an axe handle. This handle he would consider ideal because the grain at the end of the handle is just perfectly vertical. It's not canted this way or that way and it certainly isn't crossways. Here's one that he would deem as acceptable and that's because the grain isn't perfectly vertical. It does cant off a little bit. The ones that he says are unacceptable are as if they go crossways like this. The other thing I looked for in this was to make sure that there weren't any real obvious problems like big knots and other things like that and it seems okay. Um, I'm not crazy about it because they put some sort of a lacquer on the handle that I'll have to deal with at some point. I prefer to use linseed oil on my axe handles. It did, however, come with the little metal wedge that you need, and it also came with the wood wedge, and it looks acceptable. The other thing I noticed when I was looking at axe handles today is that not all of them were straight. In fact, um, this was the straightest one, and it's just about perfect, but there were axe handles that deviated fairly significantly um, through warping or whatever, so just be real careful when you choose a handle. The first step in rehandling this old axe is going to be to cut the handle off and then hammer it out. You wouldn't necessarily have to saw this handle off, but I'm doing that uh, to make it easier to get the handle out of the uh, axe head. And I'm going to save this old uh, axe handle for sentimental reasons and I'll probably make something out of it at some point. So now what I've done is I've supported the axe head between two little logs here and I've got a punch and I'm just going to try and see if I can get this to move. If not, um, another thing you can do is go ahead and drill and try to get that out that way. Uh, it looks like there's plenty of room around there. 
A final thing you have to look for is to make sure that the little metal wedge isn't still in there. And if it is, just um, pry it out if you can. It doesn't seem to be moving. Uh, one thing I am going to point out is that the axe handle came from that way and was pounded in that way. So you want to remove it that way as well. Um, because if you try to remove it this way, what will happen is uh, you'll just end up tightening whatever wedges or whatever are in there. And it's, it's not moving, so I'm going to try and drill this out a little bit. So I'm just going to drill a whole bunch of holes and, and hopefully it'll... Uh, Loosen it up enough that it wants to collapse. Well, I can definitely see why Morris Kahansky says you should never ask to borrow somebody's axe uh, because rehandling this is, is uh, proving to be difficult. Even getting the um, old handle out, I drilled a whole bunch on the from the other side and drilled a whole bunch from here, and it still doesn't want to budge. So now, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of sawing this and hopefully I can get this to split by uh, pounding it with a chisel or something. So this this might work. I'm just going to try and split it from the inside out here just by taking a cold chisel and hopefully that'll loosen it up enough. We're making making motion here. I'm able to pull out some bigger chunks. Making progress here. I guess when all else fails, there's always WD-40. There it goes. Well, I got the handle out. Uh, that was quite a task. The next thing he says in the book is that if you're going to rehandle an axe, take some time and bring it back to. Uh, perfection in terms of the edge and everything else. The first thing I'm going to do is be to remove some of this rust and I do it the lazy way with a little rust remover and some steel wool. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily have to remove the rust but since I'm going to the trouble I'm just going to bring it back to factory specs the best I can. Now that all the rust is cleaned off uh, the next step is to find um, on the inside here there's a little bit of a burr. Uh, and what will happen if you try to put an axe handle in is that it will catch on that burr and kind of peel back some of the stuff. There's also one on the top. And looking at this, I think probably what happened was once that slipped out, my grandpa took a hammer and hammered on this, and he also made a little burr there. So I'm going to take that off. Looks like this axe was painted red at one time. That's kind of neat. So. I'll just talk for just one second about files. A lot of files can only be used one way and the teeth are aligned so that they should be pushed if it's a push file or pulled if it's a pull file. And if you use it like this, back and forth, back and forth, what will happen is you'll wear the teeth down and it won't work anymore. This happens to be a double cutting file. So I can do it that way, but um, just, just beware to, to take a look at whatever file you're using to do your work. Um, I will get a little bit more detailed into axe sharpening uh, in another episode here or so, but um, I'll just show you the three things that he showed in the book if you're using a file. One is filing away from you like this. And he mentioned that as the safest method, but it's also fairly inefficient. The next method he showed is filing towards the edge. And this isn't as safe because your finger could potentially contact the edge here. Um, but he said that that's the one that most of the old timers use. And the third method he showed is uh, if you have a file that's wearing out, what you can sometimes do is is do this and it'll you'll get a little bit more use out of the file. So I've got the axe more or less ready to handle. Um, I took the burr down on the insides both top and bottom. 
I took some of the rougher um, edges off of the axe. It's, it's sharper than probably most of the axes at the store, but it's not where it's going to be when I finish. And so the next step will be um, figuring out what I have to do to this handle to get it in there. And it doesn't look like I'm going to have to take off all that much. One final point about the sharpness of your axe. Uh, this one probably was never sharpened. Uh, I remember just my grandpa would get done using it and then prop it back on the uh, splitting stump, whatever he happened to have at the time, and then lean it against the, the uh, wall of the barn. And it was probably never sharpened. It probably was always uh, neglected. And it took me a half an hour on a belt grinder um, or a belt sander to get this back into shape. And I can't imagine how long that would take with a file. So um, what Moore suggests, and I think it's a good idea, is that you return your axe to the proper sharpness after about every half hour of use or every time you fell a tree or something like that. Um, you just want to go ahead and go over the edge and get it back into shape. Because if you do it that way, you know, it'll be minor stuff that you're doing and it won't take as long. Whereas if you neglect it for um, 40 years, uh, it takes some significant effort to get it back into shape. Now how sharp is uh, sharp enough? Well, according to Morris Kahansky, what you want is an ax that you can shave with and it needs to be maintained that way. I'm actually curious to see what this ax head weighs. And it's coming in at three pounds, seven and three quarters ounces. So now what I need to do is I need to fit this axe handle to uh, fit my axe. And what you have to do is you have to kind of rasp this down a little bit. Just do a little bit at a time. And then uh, after you do just a little bit, then do a fitting and, and keep doing it until you get to a point where it'll slide on. One thing you want to be sure of is that you take an equal amount from each side so that your axe head stays centered. So what I did was every once in a while I stopped just to check and make sure we weren't um, taking off too much and that we were taking off just enough. And I think we're there. Um, the last little bit, I'm just going to hit on the handle here and theoretically that should seat our, seat our thing really well. There we go. That's pretty well seated. It's not moving around at all. And um, there's just, the, they uh, got it just right. The, there's just enough sticking out the top here. I don't have to do anything else. I will now drive the wedge. One thing I am gonna do with this wedge is just kind of take the, the very top of this these corners down so that it doesn't split quite as easily when I'm driving it in. So now the next thing is we're going to have to start the wedge in here and I'm just going to open up the, the crack just a little bit um, because I don't think my wedge is going to be able to do that all that effectively. Now here goes, let's see, I guess you'd call this a moment of truth. Now we just need to kind of tap our wedge in and start to uh, make sure we're more or less centered and tap in our wedge. So we're hammered in and I'm pretty confident that it's not going to go in any further and that our handle is more or less stuck. So now the next thing to do is to saw off the top of the the wedge that we pounded in so that it's flush with our other wood. Now the next step is to pound in our wedge and the object here is to spread the axe head this way and this way so that it, it uh, holds better and to do that you don't want it this way because that might split it and you don't want it this way because that's not going to do anything. You kind of want it cross-eyed like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a, a spot here and we will tap it in. Start with our small hammer and then 
get bigger if we need to. There we go. Um, it is now rehandled. I'm going to do two other little mods here just for fun. One of the things I really like about these uh, GB axes is that an inch and a half from the end of the handle they have a uh, 3 8 inch hole uh, drilled here and then countersunk. And that's real handy uh, because there's a neat way that you can hang an axe uh, with just a little piece of cordage and stuff. And I'll, I'll eventually I'll get around to showing that. So I just went ahead and added that to my axe handle. And the other thing I want to do, because uh, he mentions it in the book, is to just paint the end of the handle. Uh, I'm going to paint mine orange because I just love orange in the woods and uh, because of the whole Dutch thing. So that's it for this episode, and the next one we will work on axe sharpening.